All right, we're out here at Las Vegas, Nevada at the federal courthouse, the Lloyd George, is that right? Federal courthouse here in Nevada. This morning, at 8 this morning, we uh, went to Greg Burleson's sentencing hearing. Um, this is, he was convicted of count five, assault on a federal officer. Count six is a 924C uh, attached to count five, use and carry of a far, firearm. Count eight, threatening a federal officer. Uh, count nine, this is another 924C, use and carry of a firearm in coincidence with that crime. Count 12, obstruction of justice. Count 14, interference of interstate commerce. Count 15 is another 924C attached to count 14 and count 16, interstate travel and aid of extortion. Um, so they went through the point system upstairs and his point system ended in a base level of 32 um, with some additions which give him, what was it, a six, 65? No. No, he, he was he was given ten points and upward uh, additions to forty two, I think. Yeah, they they ended at a forty two point. They added two more today for terrorism enhancement, then they subtracted ten. Correct. Okay, and so we went through this. The his lawyer Jackson uh, requests leniency for. Uh, past working with law enforcement, request leniency for his medical issues. He says that he didn't know at the time, but he should have put him under a mental evaluation so that he could uh, use that for um, an insanity of defense or a mentally in incapable defense. Um, also request for leniency for his physical um, issues, his medical issues. Um, his alcoholism, his physical impairments, also a request because of his hardship, um, being in the prison system, being blind. Um, so the judge goes and she says she's going to give the request for leniency for his past working with law enforcement because it was voluntary and he wasn't getting something from it. I believe that means like he wasn't sentenced and then agreed to roll on someone so that he would have a lesser... Uh, sentence himself. So she did uh, give leniency for that. She also gave leniency for physical impairment and alcoholism, but wouldn't do both, saying that the two were the same uh, grounds. So she kind of linked them together and, and knocked 10 points off for that. Um, they did add two points for the terrorism adjustment, um, it being valid because this was an act of terrorism against the government. She um, went into a long-winded uh, explanation of how horrible these charges were and how the, wit the victims suffered dearly. There were um, federal agents, BLM agents in the courtroom that she, uh, re she m gestured to about um, them when they had tearful... Uh, testimonies on the stand of the fact that they are still de dealing with this today even though no shots were fired um, she went in to say that the mental uh, harm on these people is so much worse than physical harm if they had actually been shot they could recover from that but they cannot recover from their mental uh, anguish that comes from this uh, this act of terrorism she said these folks were just trying to enforce the law and that what they were what they were received with could be uh, construed as childhood playground bullying tactics. Um, to me, sitting in the courtroom, I believe the childhood playground bullying tactics actually came from the BLM and were the reason that a lot of American citizens went to the aid um, of the Bunkerville standoff and the Bundy family for the childhood playground bullying tactics of, a, of one gentleman who stopped on the side of the road to take pictures and was arrested by a group, a gang-like group of BLM agents who beat him to the ground, arrested him, took his property and held him overnight without charging him. Um, also the other childhood playground bullying tactics could be when protesters 
We're standing on the side of the road and we're met with, once again, a gang of BLM agents with attack dogs and tasers as they enacted these things on the protesters, as they took a grandma and lifted her off the ground and body slammed her to the ground. And then she, she goes to call on law enforcement and they will not respond. Ambulance will not come to her aid. She says the, the, it was not appropriate conduct of these America, American citizens on what they did on April 12th, 2014 in Bunkerville, Nevada. But she wants to refuse to talk about the inappropriate conduct by, by the BLM, by the federal agents in this case leading up to what caused the event on April 12th, 2014. She doesn't want to bring any of that in, but she wants to say the American citizens are acting in a childhood playground bullying tactics. They did not take these jobs to be in the sights of fellow American citizens. To me, they took these jobs to harass and, sh and um, show their superiority over the American citizens to uh, become in a, in a level of power so that they could go around and, and uh, reenact their childhood playground bullying tactics upon American citizens. At the end of Greg Burleson's sentencing, they also brought up the fact that there's a restitution of $1.5 million that is supposed to be split between all the convicted men. This, um, and this was a rounded down number. They rounded it down to $1.5 million. She said that this is uh, the restitution for the contracts they paid to the contract cowboys um, and all the other uh, contracts that they had to enact this uh, roundup. Um, of the cattle and that the American taxpayers need to be repaid for this injustice. I agree. The American taxpayers do need to be repaid for this injustice. They need to be repaid for the injustice that the uh, federal system upstairs is spending millions of their dollars to hide the truth and to railroad American citizens that stood up for constitutional rights, that stood up for American citizens being bullied by these federal agencies. At the end, um, Greg Burleson was charged with, I see that. It looks like 70 years and three months, 135 months minimum that she went with, and then the uh, 57. Okay, looks like we came back, so I'm going to repeat this. We're moving to try to get better signal. So once again, he was uh, sentenced to 135 months minimum. So she did go minimum, not maximum there. Um, and then plus the 57 years mandatory minimum, and this is just on the 924C charges. This is the charges, the uh, enhancements for using a firearm in an act of violence. Um, once again, here is our penal system using mandatory minimums to um, make sure that people go to prison. Now you think, you know, when you're voting for these mandatory minimums, you think that you're um, doing the right thing. These violent criminals, they, they need to have these mandatory minimums. Tell me one case where there was a violent crime that they are not given the time that they deserve. Mandatory minimums, the only purpose of that is to ensure that the American citizens go to jail for lengthy periods so that the federal government and the private prison industry can make money off of these people. I will stand here and say never, never, never vote for a mandatory minimum. There is no reason if the crime is heinous enough, the judge will uh, en enact the right amount of uh, sentence for that crime. There is no reason to put a mandatory minimum in there um, because the mandatory minimums are just to ensure that uh, they spend extra long amounts of time in jail so that the federal government and the private prison industry can make as much money as possible on them. So he's going to serve how many total years? He's going to serve 70 years and three months with also three years probation after the fact. Now she was a little more lenient towards Greg inside than she has been to Jerry DeLumis. 
um, and other people. I want to say that Greg's point system was very close to Todd's point system, and Todd was only convicted of two charges, no 924Cs. So um, I believe that that's for the pure fact that she fully knows that he will die in prison anyways. Channel 8 News stood outside the courtroom. Of course, they were inside the courtroom for Greg Burleson's uh, sentencing. They only showed up maybe twice the whole last uh, trial, and one of those times was just to get the information on Greg Burleson being a previous FBI informant. This news uh, outlet, they are fake news. They don't even sit in the courtroom and get the truth and they come down and harass people as they're leaving the courtroom. Greg's parents were trying to leave the courtroom today and they, they tried to follow them down and harass them. They were doing an interview with his lawyer and then pulled off as soon as they came out. Luckily, the supporters were here to try to make a barrier so that they could not get to the family. They have You have to understand that this is very hard for families to sit inside. It was extremely hard for myself to sit inside and listen to the injustices that were going on. And the way I hear it, this was better than Jerry DeLumis's hearing in the way that the judge was acting. Um, we go back in um, to have Agent Swanson on the stand, which we will talk about at the end of the day today. Lots of uh, changing of stories going on inside today. I'm going to pass it over to Anthony Depew and let him give his outlook on what happened with Greg today. I think what I want to explain is, is how the sentencing process works. So you're convicted of various crimes. So I think what we're going to do is, because we're having a little bit of reception trouble right out here by the road and we don't have a lapel mic, uh, we'll talk about the sentencing process for Greg Burleson, why 57 years was absolutely mandatory minimum, how that got stacked upon him, and then her departure to get him down to 135 months consecutive to the 57 years, which gave him 70 years in a few months. Uh, based Because we're having reception issues, we'll discuss that in the afternoon. Like I said once again, um, no victim, no crime, no shots were fired, yet these people are charged with three different 924Cs. There was an initially four different 924Cs. They dropped one count before we started the first trial inside. Um, I, I can't push this enough. No victim, no crime. If you have ever go to the ballot box and there is a mandatory minimum on there, do not vote for it. There is no reason to add mandatory minimums to anyone. If the crime is heinous enough, the punishment will be heinous as well. So um, no reason to vote mandatory minimum. It's being enacted on people, you know, everyday Americans. And once again, the Patriot Act is being used here, the enhancement for terrorism. Um, it's an injustice to the American citizens. What's happening here needs to go everywhere. Um, no victim, no crime. All right, we're out here at Las Vegas, Nevada at the federal courthouse, the Lloyd George, is that right? Federal courthouse here in Nevada. This morning, at 8 this morning, we uh, went to Greg Burleson's sentencing hearing. Um, this is, he was convicted of count five, assault on a federal officer. Count six is a 924C uh, attached to count five, use and carry of a far, firearm for a mentally in, incapable defense. Um, also request for leniency for his physical um, issues, his medical issues, um, his alcoholism, his physical impairments. Also a request because of his hardship, um, being in the prison system, being blind. Um, so the judge goes and she says she's going to give the request for leniency for his password system upstairs. And his point system ended in a base level of 32 um, with some additions which give him, what was it, a six, 65? No. No, he, he was he was given 10 points and upward uh, additions to 42, I think. Yeah, they, they ended at a 42 point. They added two more today for terrorism enhancement, then they subtracted 10. Correct. Count 8, threatening a federal officer. Uh, count 9, this is another 924C use and carry of a firearm in 
coincidence with that crime. Count 12, obstruction of justice. Count 14, interference of interstate commerce. Count 15 is another 924C attached to count 14 and count 16, interstate travel and aid of extortion. Um, so they went through the point system. Okay. And so we went through this. The His lawyer, Jackson, uh, requests leniency for uh, past working with law enforcement, requests leniency for his medical issues. He says that he didn't know at the time, but he should have put him under a mental evaluation so that he could uh, use that for um, an insanity of defense.